Hi everyone, let's say goodbye to January and hey up to February with some votes and stuff and a look back at the videos that happened in case you missed any. Let's do that first. It's all being crammed into one video again this month. Rach needs to use this room very soon. Let's get filming things. I'm delaying it by talking about it. Uh, Whistle Mountain is the kind of successor to Whistle Stop, hex-based train game from a couple of years ago from Bezier Games. This time, Scott Caputo teamed up with Luke Laurie from Manhattan Project Energy Empire and Dwellings of Elderville, but I haven't played that one. Whereas Energy Empire, check out that. Great playthrough. End game, of course. Uh, but now it's all airships. There's worker placement, placing them around the board to get various tiles and more scaffolding that you can put your workers around. Workers are airships to get more and more resources, but eventually you'll use those resources to make machines, which you can then put your airships on as well. And you'll be able to get more resources and things, but activate more stuff like activating more machines, getting more points for doing things. And eventually you'll be building and building and building up to this bridge point and as soon as you start building after that water level starts rising certain bits can't be used anymore machines get waterlogged and your meeples that you're trying to save by placing them underneath machines yeah it saves them don't worry about that uh, they will end up down in the water and lose you a load of points if you don't rescue them of course it's your job uh whistle mountain halatau got played through again uh, because the kind of results of last month's poll were that uh or was it the months before now the results of a poll were surprisingly in favor of going back to some of my favorite games from last year in fact uh, Halatau and Praga Cap at Regni and doing solo playthroughs of them because I'd originally done two player ones so that's spoiling one later in the list but Halatau got played through again but with different decks and stuff uh, but solo this time the solo version is much the same but you, you use the cards that clear out the quadrants you just clear out one quadrant at a time, so action slots will kind of stay occupied with workers. Hata, if you haven't seen either playthrough, is an Uwe Rosenberg game, master of farming cardboard. Uh, and again, we're planting crops and stuff and getting sheep and playing cards, the kind of drawers that a lot of the pun, a lot of the cards can be played you know, at any time. Uh, and so somebody else fulfilling a condition or you just have to have things rather than spend things to activate a lot of the cards and you can be building up a load of income for bonuses to come through every round or later on you'll be trying to score points cards to get the most points but a lot of the things are based on uh, craft buildings that want certain combinations of items to be given to them to move them along to start to score your points but to move this community center along so you'll get more and more workers at first and then points once you've unlocked all of those it's a fantastic game. It was my second favourite game of last year, so I loved the chance to do another playthrough for it. Hey, uh, suggest that in the comments that I do it again if you want to see even more decks and another playthrough of Palato. Maybe we should put that in the vote. It's not on the list yet. Maybe that's a mistake. Uh, Meeple Land is a lighter game uh, from Blue Orange Games, uh, or in the UK, uh, Cold Spring Games distributor, if you're interested. And uh, this is... It's a theme park board game. I am very much interested in anything theme park themed based on kind of actual theme parks, but I think more or less harkens back to just being obsessed with uh, the actual video game uh, theme park. And so here we are using our cash to buy different attractions and services as well. And at the end of every round, you'll attract a bus with certain colored of visitors on them and your attractions have spaces for different colored visitors. Some require services to be next to them to allow extra visitors in there or visitors that will earn you more money. And it's it's got a nice little system where it starts, starts off giving everyone a load of money at the start of each round. And then gradually as the game goes on, it kind of weans you off all of that and doesn't give you anything for the last round. So you have to have built up a decent amount of income from your visitors in there. Lighter, faster, Perhaps simpler game, but uh, yeah, very, 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 very enjoyable. Almost say all of that. Uh, Cubitas, uh, latest game from AEG and John D. Clare, designer of Mystic Veil vale and Space Base and not Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Darkness, there we go. Edge of Tomorrow is that film. Uh, Cubitas is a race game based around a lot of dice. There are all these different colored dice and depending on the setup that you have chosen, each of these dice corresponds to a card of that color, and there are plenty. I want to say there are at least there are at least five cards of each color, uh, all with different powers. It comes with a load of pre-made sets. 
that you can play them with, or of course you can just shuffle them up and play with any combination that you like. And it's got four uh, race tracks that you can go on as well. Basically, you are trying to earn money to buy more dice. You're trying to earn feet to earn movement around this map because it's a race. First to the finish line wins, and then after that, it's you know furthest along. Uh, but the courses can be quite straightforward ones, like the starting one. I think I did the no, I did the playthrough on. Uh, uh, I didn't use the starting setup for that one. Uh, just simple ones where you're just basically avoiding water and trying to get around the track. And then ones that I used in the playthrough, it's got like you know, uh, catapult spaces where if you can pay the cost, it will take you far across the map. Tons of spaces that will like thin out your less useful dice that you started out with. It's a push your luck game as well. So it's not just you get to roll this many dice. You do get to roll a certain amount of dice. But the ones that roll faces get put into an active pool. And as soon as you've rolled, you're kind of safe from busting until you've rolled three hits. As soon as you've rolled three hits, you can keep going as long as you like. But if you ever end up rolling nothing with one of your rolls, you bust. You do get a bit of a reward for that. And there is a, a bit of an advantage, especially in certain setups, uh, because you'll go around this fan track and you'll get to draw more dice and get some uh, permanent money coming in. Uh, yeah, but fantastic uh, dicey race game. Uh, then next was Praga, as I mentioned, one of the top of uh, of a vote. Go back to these games. That's my favourite game of 2020 and do a solo playthrough. And around the time I was uh, getting ready to do the playthrough, uh, a tabletop simulator mod came out that was you know, sanctioned. Uh, permission was given by the publisher Delicious Games to put it on tabletop simulator because there's a ton on tabletop simulators workshop. But yeah, whether people want them to be on there is up in the air. Braga, I know for sure, is uh, is allowed to be uh, up there as a mod. And so if, if you like it and you've had it on Tabletop Simulator for now, support Delicious Games and buy a copy if you can get all the one. But yeah, I, I've decided let's try doing, let's try filming Tabletop Simulator for a start and get uh, used to it again because some prototypes might not end up making the journey over it at some point. And I'm going to have to use Tabletop Simulator for some things. But uh, yeah, I think it went really well. The mod is fantastically done. You can do scripting on Tabletop Simulator. So you know, just a, a click of a button sets up the game for you and does the action crane and sorts out the buildings, changing eras and stuff. Uh, so yeah, that, that was really, really smooth. But the core of the game is still, it's Praga. Uh, it, it's got a solo version in the box, but there is also a, a solo version where you're playing against Peter Parler, I believe his name is where it's, it's basically an AI deck that's going to take away certain tiles, it's going to build in certain places, just adds a bit more to you just, you know, the, the normal solo variant is basically just, just play the game, but you're the only one doing it. Whereas this adds, you know, more buildings around that you can you can use them to your advantage, which I do really like. Uh, but that's just basically more progress, just reaffirming as it did with Halitau. Yep, this, uh, these, these were the best games of last year and I love them. And then finally, right up on the 31st to make it come in uh school of sorcery uh, a, a new game from steve finn designer of such things as herbaceous the little flower shop the biblio series uh still my favorite it's cosmic run and cosmic run regeneration we'll play through biblios at some point maybe we should put that in a vote uh but anyway, School of Sorcery, it's a re-implementation of Institute of Magical Arts. It's a two-player only game, head-to-head, -head, where we are vying for influence of these cards. We're trying to be the best in this magical school. And you end up with five crystals at the start of each round. We roll three dice, and then we have cards that determine, you know, this will put one, two, or three uh, crystals on that die number, the card that corresponds to that die number. Or you've got cards that are going to put crystals on the opposite of that die number so you can kind of get an idea for where the other person might go you can re-roll your dice as well if you've got the tokens for it so you get it's all about mind games of where where you think the person's gonna go can you block them can you get there first without being interrupted because you want a certain amount of crystals on each card to be able to take it but you also need a certain amount different to your opponent as well and it's all a race for points but uh, yeah it's a, a load of different powers you try and slowly accumulate uh, it's characters that are going to earn you more and more points as you go along. Do you go for the big ticket items, but you need loads of crystals on them or just try and build up loads of less powerful items that maybe you don't need to fight as much over. Yeah, great, great game. Bit too mean for us, but hey, check it out and see if it would be for you. And as well as the main playthroughs, there were overviews for Kickstarter's Tinner's Trail. 
got a new version from Alley Cat Games. I believe that's just about to finish. You might just get in there if you haven't seen that yet. And, oh no, pronunciation. It's not my show. <laughs> so I keep reading it. It's Musao, I think. The right pronunciation. Anyway, we're Vikings. We're trapped in a labyrinthine tomb. Labyrinthine? Labyrinthine. I don't know. And uh, we're in a tomb anyway. Sorry, coughing happened. We're playing cards. You need to play a card and discard a card. And each card will have an effect based on which one you did. And uh, it's all about managing your, <laughs> your health so you don't die and trying to get all certain cards in a row, these passage cards, to be able to remove all these passages blocking you to escape and win the game. And uh, where did this go up? I think this is a February one. Dice Hospital rules video. It's a little bit of a... I'll mention it early, maybe. I don't usually make rules videos. I think I've done one before uh, for Terry T. Wukong. That was, that was a few years ago now, wasn't it? Uh, but yeah, Dice Hospital Community Care expansion that came out uh, very, very recently. Adds loads and loads of stuff to Dice Hospital. If you'd like to know how that works, there's an actual rules video for it. How about that? And uh, coming up in February for sure, these these are already filmed as well, some of them. Uh, Roman Roll Gladiators, new expansion for Roman Roll. Uh, a kind of meaty roll and write game, a, a medium weight euro roll and write game. Uh, Kingdom Rush uh, Elemental Uprising. I should have camera here, I should have left it on. Just filmed that. Uh, it's, a, it's a standalone game in the Kingdom Rush series. A lot of the same core gameplay, but a whole new campaign, loads of uh, new stuff coming in. And Oil Town is coming as well. Uh, that's it for Kickstarters. And for film playthroughs that are definitely coming up pretty soon, I should think. Uh, Fire by Freedom and Freeze, the Wingspan Oceania expansion, added an Automa for that for the first time as well. Tobago, Tobago? Volcano, the new expansion for Tobago. Uh, Valeria Card Kingdoms, started playing uh, a preview copy of a co-op expansion that's coming out for it uh, on Kickstarter soon. And I realized I've never done a video for it, and I love uh, Valeria Card Kingdoms, so I've gone back to that. And Alubari Solo is coming up as well. So, Try not to rush. <laughs> the vote for February and interlude in the between end of January, start of February stuff. Uh, the This is kind of a, to give you an idea of what might come up in February, but also the pretty much the whole channel uh, hinges on uh, a Patreon. Uh, patrons pledge money each month or you can just do it uh, yearly if you would like and uh, to help me keep going. And if the, the, the better that does, the more I can make, basically. It helps if you say it as well. Patreon.com forward slash Slicker Drips is where it is. Uh, thank you very, very much to everyone that uh, supports me on there. Thank you for doing it for another month. Hello to everyone that has joined since I did one of these. Uh, and yeah, hope you enjoy it around here. And if you are a, a voter level or higher, it's my friend's pad that I've got all the options written on. Uh, here is what the vote is going to be. But if you throw a pen about, if uh, you have got a game that you'd like me to get hold of or play through or I've done one in the past and you want me to do a solo version of it or something like that, let me know. I'm around. Let me know in the comments to this. Let me know on Patreon. Let me know on Borg and Geek. Whatever you would like. Uh, because uh, some of these are specifically things that have been asked for. Alibari Solo was... Uh, I was asked for it ages ago and then reminded that uh, I hadn't done it. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is let me know and it'll be a next month's photo or... I'll just do it. We'll see how it goes, right? So February, I had. I don't think anyway. I haven't got a great big pile of games. There haven't been a, a hot new pile of releases uh, coming out uh, to my door. So in the interim, I think it's been a while since we've had a big solo vote. Maybe I did one last month and I've forgotten all about it. But I think it's been a bit of a while. So I've decided that, unless you say otherwise, that we're going to go for solo option of a load of games that I don't think I've done solo videos for, otherwise we're just repeating ourselves. Uh, so, the options will be Curious Cargo, which is a two-player only game from Ryan Courtney, a kind of spin-off uh, from his game Pipeline that I did a playthrough for last year, I think. Uh, it's it's a great head-to-head, -head, but a bit mean for us. I know that there's, a, there's supposed to be a great solo variant for it that I haven't played yet. Should I play through that? Uh, do you want to see that? Uh, Tapestry, Plans and Ploys, uh, an expansion for Tapestry that I did a playthrough for just as that was uh, coming out. Uh, a kind of unique civilization game from uh, Stonewire Games. This is the expansion to it. And I did a two-player playthrough originally. So 
Automa Factory always make uh, fantastic solar variants, so I imagine that would be worth uh, investigating. Do you want to see a playthrough of Tapestry and its new expansion, or should I just do a overview of what's new in the expansion? Thunderstone Quest is a fantastic uh, deck builder that's got a really great cooperative mode in its Barricade expansion that came out. Tons and tons and tons and tons of cards for it. I think new new uh, Kickstarters and stuff are always on the way, adding uh, thousands more. But uh, yeah, I've never done any kind of video for it. I'd like to. Would you like to see it? Mage Knight, possibly the granddaddy of all of the solo games, maybe? Uh, it's come up before. I had a real hankering to go after it, kind of. It was, in, was it in the summer last year? I think it was when I was had all my shoulder stuff happening. But uh, yeah, I got back into Mage Knight after kind of giving up on it years and years ago. Got right back in. I think I'm in the same situation now where I haven't played it for about six months and we'll have to learn it again. Do you want to help me do that by doing a playthrough for it? We should do some Mage Knight stuff, right? What expansions and things? I've never played any of the expansions to uh, Mage Knight, and I know that uh, at least have I got Krang? At least Shades of Tesla and Krang, I believe, were designed by Paul Grogan, or Paul Grogan was uh, one of the designers of them. Heck, that's got to be great, right? I know that Shades of Tesla is just sitting up there. It's not just that's not the position that I look at when I'm thinking of uh, certain expansions for things. Uh, Age of Darkness, we were mentioning John D. Clare earlier for Cubitus. This is kind of you know, the system of Mystic Veil vale where you are card crafting. You've got these baggy sleeves around cards and you have these kind of clear acetate cards with bits more information on. Your cards get more powerful as you go along. Well, Edge of Darkness kind of takes that concept and brings it around a great big Euro game. This is another one. It's got a great big solo mode for it. I've never played it solo. Should I? Edge of Darkness. Not Edge of Tomorrow though, I keep wanting to say. Uh, Forge War. I always hesitate to put into votes because I'm scared of it uh, winning, which probably egg it on to win even more. Uh, this is the first published game of Gloomhaven Guru, uh, Isaac Childress. This is a game where we kind of play as these shady money men in charge of adventurers going out on you know, fantasy quests. We're the people telling them to go on these quests and they come back and bring us all of the stuff and we want to equip them with the right stuff. We'll need recipes to give them the right equipment. Uh, we have people in the mines getting us resources. There's a strange puzzle game going on with uh, getting your resources from the mine. But all of this stuff is going on. It's, it's a massive game as well. It, it's got all of these eras. There are ways of fast forwarding uh, through the game to start in later eras because the whole uh, the whole game can be a, a great big long one if you play it uh, all the way through. But kind of the, the big thing about the solo game is that you have to take a quest every you know, round of the game, whereas normally, of course, it would be an option. It would be advisable to take as many as you could, but so you have to take new quests in the solo version. And if you should ever fail at a quest in the normal game, it's not ideal. Again, you, you'll you get punished for doing that and you'll lose out on a load of opportunities. In the solo game, if you fail any part of a quest, you lose the game. And uh, I remember that, when was this now? When did Gloomhaven come out? Was that 2017? As I was in my kind of hype for Gloomhaven first arriving, I started filming a Forge War playthrough and I think I got about an hour into it and then I failed. And I thought at the time, well, we can't have this. I've got to show more of it than this and ended up deleting it and thinking, well, I'll get around to that. Here we are about three, four years later. I've never gotten around to that. Should I get around to that? Shows you always, always keep your, just, just do something with the stuff that you filmed if you can. Oh, battery is running out now. We're running out on time on all fronts. Uh, Rome and Roll, as I mentioned, the new Kickstarter is coming for the Gladiators expansion. I did a Kickstart video again for the prototype. Should I go back and I, I never did the solo version. Uh, should I go back and make a proper playthrough for it and uh, look at the solo variant because I've been playing it. It's great. Agricola, one of my all time favorites. I always put it in the votes. Never does that well. It's an all time classic. Uh, I've never done a playthrough for it though. So I always feel like putting it on just in case uh, it gets enough votes. Uh, Russian Railroads, kind of back on everyone's Russian Railroads, ra Russian Railroads radar because uh, it's getting Ultimate Railroads 
this year it's getting some kind of grand re-release with new expansions and stuff. I believe I did a video for the base game. It's got some great expansions in German and American railroads. German railroads got all these modular additions to your playboard. Should I do German railroads? I think that is all of the options for now. So what would you like to see? Whether you are a voter or not, let me know in the comments about uh, which of those you'd like to see the most, which games I haven't mentioned, which upcoming releases I should be looking out for, getting hold of to do playthroughs for in the future. I'm sure there are loads of anticipated games that uh, haven't been on my radar as yet. But anyway, it's time to go and edit a lot of things, starting with this right now. This is probably going to get edited and put right up, up in about an hour's time or something. The lightning fast stuff that can happen. Thank you very much for watching though. I hope you're excited for some of these games that are coming up and that you'll join me for them. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for the next game. Bye everyone.